inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you, cause real women don't bitch, no, real women don't, 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 bitch. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me on the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. This is your proud host, August Crenshaw, a.k.a. Mrs. Raw, Real and Relentless. I am the number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs because building mental muscle is necessary in order to implement successful business strategies. This show has been created for the woman who is not excuse driven and needs help building a profitable business. I will be interviewing women from various fields who are willing to break the silence on struggles that specifically affect female entrepreneurs. Welcome to a show where I and guest speakers from time to time share our methods that help us beast our business no matter what is going on in our lives. Whether you are an online or brick and mortar business owner, this show is for you. We will hit every angle, personal, professional, and spiritual. Why? Because on any given day, you get hit with shit from a scenario involving one, more, or perhaps all of the above. It all impacts you and your mindset towards your business. I have made it my personal mission to provide a space where we dive deep into the BS we face on a day-to-day basis. Hey, 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 how you doing? This is August Crenshaw recording the live version of the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. And we are here today to talk about controversial issues and allow you all to get in on the conversation, to come in with your questions, your comments, your controversy, and all that good ish. And so today, the question of the day is, you said you heard from God slash the universe. So who messed up? You are him. Ouch. Okay. Now this is a this is a good topic. It's a good topic and it's one that needs to be addressed because I listen to entrepreneurs all the time, right? And as a person who specializes in sales, what do we know about sales? Well, selling has a lot to do with what? Emotions and logic. But most people already know that most purchases are based off of impulse. And so people get in their feelings and then that's where their judgment comes from as to whether or not they actually make a purchase. No matter how much they want to say that they were, you know, making the best decision, if it just feels like it's the right time, I've seen people do things over and over again. Matter of fact, I've done them myself. Okay. And so I'm going to, I'm going to throw two things out there and I'm going to give you two examples. You know me, I'm always giving personal examples. I'm always giving professional examples. And I'm also always giving examples from my own life experience. So you guys can, you know, get an idea of where this energy is coming from. And so first and foremost, uh, when I first started dating my husband, let's go personal. There was this woman in my life who was like a spiritual guru. She basically had this prophetic awe about herself and she was she was just freaking amazing, right? And so she would say things, they would be spot on and you know, people just hung on her every word. Basically almost like she was a god and to a degree you could you could say I hung on to her every word too. Wherever this woman was ministering, that's where I was at. So I started dating my husband when I did, I was 30 and he was 21. Now he did still have a little street in him. He was doing some things, but he was well beyond his years, very mature. And he knew what he was getting into being with a woman who already had two kids. Now, one day, this person in particular, because she was very close to this individual, having to call me and was like, oh, my God, you know, I had this horrible dream and the death angel was upon him and he's going to die because I know he's in the streets and he's with this person and that person and so on and so forth. And the entire time that they were talking. I was just sitting there saying to myself, I'm not going to tell you my business because he had literally spent the entire day prior and the night and he literally had just left from being with me. And so they were swearing up and down that they knew that he was in the streets. They know the guys that he hangs with. They know what he was into and that God had gave him this revelation. And I was sitting there just thinking to myself, 
No, your paranoia, because this this was like this is a blood relative. Your paranoia about his lifestyle because you want him to be a certain version of a saved young man has you thinking the negative thoughts. And so I know that God didn't give you that because where you thought he was and what you said you thought he was doing, he absolutely was not. And so we can put God on a bunch of stuff real easily, but we don't want to come back and then say, oops, I made a mistake. I'll move with the wrong emotions or I, you know, whatever. And so I remember saying to that person, well, first of all, if God gave you that is because he would believe that you are powerful, that you would pay, pray for angels to be around him, that you would speak against that thing, not that you would speak at that thing and that you would confirm it. So my confrontation and, and saying that to that individual and even offering to pray with them otherwise actually caused that person to turn on me and our relationship went down the slippery slope of communicating to non-communication. And I mean, and a lot of you may know exactly what I'm talking about. So now let's fast forward to me. I remember when it was time, I felt like it was just time for me to get another coach. And I'm one of those people that I believe in coaching, but I do not believe that you should have a coach just for the sake of coaching. I see somebody's already joined me. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and put you on allow to talk. Uh, before I give this other example, do I need to unmute you, darling? Because do you already have something to say? I haven't given a business example yet. Uh, matter of fact, it's doing that funky thing. If you can unmute yourself, beautiful. If, you were, if you're ready to talk, then fine. If not, I'll wait. Let's see what you got. Let me wait for a second because I was walking. <laughs> Let me go back in just a moment because I was walking and listening at the same time. Okay, no, 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 no. So you're good. But you, you, you know, I know you. So when you're ready, you can go ahead and just interject. So I'm going to go ahead and give the business example and you just let me know and you just chime on in. Okay. 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 So anyway, now let me, let me fast forward to myself. So, you know, I believe in coaching. Duh, I'm a coach, but I don't believe that you should have a coach for the sake of having a coach. But every once in a while, when I have these moments when I don't have one, I could get this conscious of, OK, am I, you know, am I honoring the integrity of the industry that I'm in? And so I ran into this lady and I was like, oh, my God. You know, I have met the coach of my dreams. This is the person that I'm supposed to work with. And I was super duper excited about it. And I'll never forget that the price tag was steep. I'm like, it's $2,000 a month. But nevertheless, I'm like, I can do this. Um, it was scary. I took the jump. Now, once I got there, you know, and I felt like I felt like this was what I should do. Now, I didn't necessarily say, oh, God is leading me to do this. But I did say them, them freakish words. Oh, I just feel like this is something that I should do. And when I got inside of the program and I began to get involved with what was going on, what would end up happening is that everything that that woman promised on the other side of that experience, that's not what it was. For instance, we were all supposed to be individuals who had hit 5K months or a little bit more, but couldn't get to the 10K. We wanted to bust through our glass ceiling. So these were already supposed to be bosses in business that needed, you know, navigate needed help navigating the coaching experience. And so what ended up happening with me is that I started, there were two people in particular that were just like, oh my God, their mindset and their spirit was so fucking horrible. No, no offense to them, but they were crying. They were whining. You know, one of us said we wanted 50 K in 90 days. They felt like, oh, my little meager goal is barely $10,000. I'm not like you other ladies. It's such an honor to be in your presence. And it was just this really, really weird energy, this weird vibe. And, you know, you're paying this hefty sum to be in this group coaching program. And I really felt like the lady wanted a lot of what was being facilitated in that group to be facilitated by the people that were in there. And I was like, she, these people actually need to hire me to be their coach to do their mindset. But mind you, I didn't step on her toes because mindset was supposed to be a part of what she did. And there actually was a woman in the group that knew me and was like, oh, August, this person, I can see him because I, I know they need you. Matter of fact, she had worked with me before with some other stuff. And so she knew the kind of results I could get. But I said I didn't want to operate out of integrity. And I didn't want to step on that person's toes. Now, based on the fact that they were friends with me, if they followed me, if something connected, we would go from there. And that's what it was. But what ended up happening for me is that spiritually, I completely felt unaligned. 
I felt like I was in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing. Not to mention that the person had also did some things where she siphoned the client. So the integrity was destroyed. But my point is this, and you're going to understand why I'm bringing this story out in a second, is that I had paid the balance in full up front for the full program. I had only been in there for about five weeks and I left. I left and continued to go on my journey, which I hit my own income goal without even being in the program in the first place. But nevertheless, when my when I have when if I'm bold enough to say that my soul isn't aligned to something, then I don't stick around and then still try to get the goods. And I've worked with people in the healing industry, and I'm like, so you gonna sit here and say your soul ain't aligned no more? This ain't really what God calls you to do. But I guess since you already spent your money, then you're going to endure this contract and you're going to spend this time and you're still going to be involved. No, we're talking about your soul. We're talking about a major component of what facilitates your ambition, your drive, your zest to live, why the hell would you still be connected to it is basically what I'm saying. And so, you know, to make a long story short, um, I just really want to talk about this because I see too many entrepreneurs go on this whole little thing of always talking about God told him to do something. The universe told him to do something. The spirit spoke and told him to do something. But then all of a sudden, when shit doesn't go the way that they want it to go, then all of a sudden they're not aligned and they're supposed to leave. And so I'm, I need I need the, the real women to please stand up and I need the other women to stop being a punk and actually deal with what you have to deal with. And I'm going to be honest with you. I always see this with ultra, super, mega, super, maxi save Christians or people that are in the healing slash transformational arena. And so when it really, really gets thick and when it's time to deal with your shit and when somebody's in your face and it makes you uncomfortable, a lot of you all become so damn holy that you're no earthly good. You, you're so busy and you're so able to hear what the spirit said. You're so able to be able to see, you know, what the divine has led you to. But when it's time to actually deal with situations, you ineffectively communicate with people. You can't take constructive criticism. You don't want to deal with your shit. And then the first thing you do is say, oh, God changed his mind. No, when God gives you an assignment, he gives it to you so that you can go from the beginning to the end. It's not that he changed, it's that you changed. And so a lot of you all need to pause before you keep on saying that the divine or God told you to do something because you don't really want to do the work. And as far as it goes with me, real, real talk, I don't sugarcoat. And people have seen me rant on live videos. There's a gentleman um, that I'm working with right now. And there was something he was supposed to do and he didn't do it. And he cracked a joke. He sent me a message and he said, I'm going to do it because I don't want to become the subject of one of your rants. And so this is what I find to be really funny. A lot of individuals love my rants. You love it when I go in. And when I'm talking about the shit that people do and how tacky it is, y'all be amen and high five left and front, back side and right and all of that. But when it's you, but when it's you, then all of a sudden you get sensitive, you get in your feelings and you want to punk out. And the first excuse that you use is that God is not in it and that he didn't call you to do that. But he knew who, who he knew who I was and how I was before you came. And you knew who I was and how I was before you came. Okay, I'm about to say this and you can get ready to come on in. And that's the part that really fucks me up. Because if I show you all any other person, and if I wasn't so fucking authentic, the, th the types of things that I do when I coach people, if it threw them for a loop, I would go back and I would check myself. But it's not me. Because I'm showing you what it is. And so many of you all will say, that's what I need. I need that coach that's going to stay on me. That's going to give me the swift kick in the ass. That's going to help me see my shit. That's going to help me process this stuff. And then when it's time to get busy, you can't take it. Go ahead and unmute yourself, baby girl. I got it. Come on. So this is the thing, like, because you're saying this whole thing about being able to, you know, people get these confirmations from God and God told me this or spirit told me this or the universe is saying this, that and the other. And one of the things that I've been realizing, because I've been watching it play out with folks around me for the past six months or so, I would say, is it really that God is confirming something for you or is it that you are looking for a particular confirmation that strokes your ego yes. in order to be able to in a particular way and then when your 
ego gets bruised, now all of a sudden it's no longer God. But if you're, but if you put something out there that you need somebody that's in your face that needs to help you get through the stuff that you need to get through, and then they start to get you through that stuff, now all of a sudden, well, no, this wasn't God calling on my life. Actually, it was because that's what you put out there. You just didn't realize that you were calling it your you were doing it out of your own preference but now that god is moving and operating the way that god is supposed to move and operate now you don't like it and the reason why you don't like it is because you walking in because you were walking in a preference in the first place i will take it if it looks like this i will do it if i don't have to do this that ain't confirmation from god that you're trying to control the situation Ooh. and the universe don't let you control stuff because that's that's that's, that's control so when you start trying to control things and you start walking away from stuff these are the same folks that are like well i don't understand why this isn't working in my business i don't understand why i'm not why my clients are doing this i don't understand why i'm not getting this type of advancement or forward movement in my business but a lot of it has to do with the fact that you walked into something with ego as as the as the lens and then when god took over you got mad at yourself and decided you were gonna walk away from it, so you just you stopped too short, too short of the goal, essentially. Oh yeah. And you know, and and I'm and I'm gonna and I'm gonna put this out here because I remember I worked with this woman. You know, I've had so many different healers come to me, and I'm gonna be honest with you, only probably twenty percent of them actually make it. And it's literally to the point that honestly, I'm a, I'm about to just say I got a ban on even working with people in these modalities for the simple fact that I watch them continuously not do their own fucking work, not do their own shit, and it, and it bothers them when things like you said they don't go their way. And now, so here it is, you know, I was working with this woman. She had been in business for 17 years, 17 years doing the shit that she does. And when she came to me, number one, she couldn't articulate who her ideal client is. Number two, she was talking to people and she was afraid that she was not being upfront about going and actually doing reach outs. She was not seriously doing the follow up. Or when she met people, she was like, oh, well, since you connected with me, here's my program. She didn't even understand what it meant to actually connect with people. And I even remember her saying, oh, I'm going to try this thing, you know, that August says, and I met this person, I'm going to connect with them first and then connected. And then they wanted to know about her program. She was engaging in all kinds of retreats and doing different kinds of works where she was doing collaborations with other individuals. And she didn't even have fucking contracts in place with the person that she was doing a collaboration with. And she was actually taking $6,000 from people, not, not 60 bucks. Now we going to figure out a venue when we get there. You're going you're taking $6,000 with people to do a collaboration with somebody who you did not already have your own contract separately created with them. And so now that you've got one, you finally open up that you are going to actually read the motherfucker and you don't agree with what they put in it because you let them put it together and you're saying that you got pushback. So what happens with all of this money that you got that you probably have already touched and began to spend? Because if this is the way you run in your business, it also tells me how you run your personal life. It also tells me how you run your finances. You better hope for damn sure that you get this shit together, because if you don't get it together, what's going to end up happening is that you've collected this money and you're going to give a shit show when these people show up. And so you look at all of these gaping holes, like 17 years in the industry, and you're not humble enough to just come and say, look, I know how to do what I do with all of this spiritual work, but I don't know how to fucking run a business. But no, instead, she wants to always come like she has her shit together. She wants to always talk like everything is okay. I remember even having a session with her and even telling her, look, baby girl, all of this shit that I'm saying to you all right now, I said it to her and her response to me was, I'm looking at all those things. Well, duh, after 17 years, you looking at the shit really ain't doing that fucking good. And so, you know, and she's like, well, I'm, I'm listening to spirit, you know, I'm listening to spirit and whatever. Yeah. Well, you know what? Spirit might've told you to, to, to start a podcast. Spirit might've told you to launch a program. Spirit might've told you to write a book. Spirit might've told you to, you know, start a, 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 a whatever it is. But he also would then expect you to tap into the practical side of things and get the fucking advice that you need so that you can execute properly. 
not just throw yourself out there and throw caution to the wind. And that's why I say a lot of women know how to perform their duties, but they don't really know how to operate and function as business owners. And so it's really, really sad that, you know, you see the pushback and you see the pride rise up so high with individuals that need the help the most. And so you all can pray, you can fast, you can cry, you can walk on the ground with no shoes on, you can play with your crystals, drink your oil, you can pull out your tarot cards, you can do all of that shit. But when you get through doing all of those things, if you neglect the temp, the, the, the knowledge side, the practical side, the day-to-day -day human interaction, the normal, effective communication with human beings, you will continue to struggle. You know, after 10 years, somebody is considered to be a master. If you have thoroughly ex executed your gift in 10 years, all of the greats will tell you that at that point, at 10 years of, of practicing what you do, that you have obtained mastery. At the point of obtaining mastery, there is no reason why you should not be a household name that people know, even if you didn't fucking try to, even if you didn't try to. And so I'm going to ask the question again. I asked it before. At the end of the day, uh, what in the world? <laughs> what in the world are you doing? Why in the world are you doing it? Who really told you to do it? Are you justifying a decision or are you really doing what God told you to do? And I'm inclined to say, no, you did not. For real, for real. Hold up. Now, are you still on here with me? I let me please come on back because I, I I need someone to I need someone to talk this one out with me. I know that I'm not crazy, but come on, help me help me talk this bad boy out. Okay, so this whole thing about you know the when 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 spirit tells you to do something, the spirit also lets you shows you the tools in order to be able to get it done. Right? Spirit told me to write a book. Spirit gave me time, and spirit gave me resources in order to access the stuff I needed in order to write the book. Spirit showed me the people that I needed to have in order to make sure that I was able to market the book. Yes, there were there were moments, there were days I did not feel like writing, but Spirit gave me the tools and the energy to be able to keep going and keep doing it. I would love to be able to open up my own school. Spirit ain't gave me no tools for that. So guess what? Guess who ain't moving? <laughs> so it's like I can't. You you have to we have to be really careful. Like I think there's this there's this thing, especially when we the the longer we get into our businesses and the more established we think we're supposed to be, given the number of years that we've had in our in our business, it gets harder and harder and harder for us to accept the fact that we might have been doing stuff wrong, that we might have been actually moving in alignment out of alignment with spirit. And it really was just because you're saying that spirit told you to do all of these things, but if spirit ain't showing you how to get, how to pull it off, that's not spirit. That's a, that's a heart's desire. Yeah. And do you know the difference between when spirit is talking to you and when it's your heart's desire? And are you able to move accordingly? If it's your heart's desire, then you ask spirit, do I need to move on this now? And spirit will say, nah, nope. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing these things because that's where you need to be. I'll let you know when it's time. That's a good idea, but I'll let you know when it's time. And if you're truly connected, like, a, a, and I say this because I know there are a lot of folks that consider themselves to be transformational healers that are, you know, that, that consider themselves to be aligned with spirit in very particular ways. If you are really, truly connected to spirit, there is not a shift in something that spirit tells you to do. If it's something that you're supposed to do because spirit told you, then everything about your life is going to point you in the direction to get that thing done. So if you're saying spirit told me to shift, no, it didn't. Your ego did. Yeah. <laughs> your ego did. And I think it's important for us to be able to really to to be to be humble and be able to see, you know, that it's a cliche term. I know. I know be humble but <laughs> but i think it's but it's necessary for us to really sit back and really look at ourselves for the fullness of what it is that we're seeing like how many, how often does something hit you in your heart and you and you pause and say wait is this really what i'm supposed to be doing or do you just jump because it hits you on your heart and it made you feel all warm and fuzzy a cute dude can do that a 
a cute girl can do that. Mm-hmm. And then you realize you see that you that you get the warm and fuzzies because you see somebody cute, and then you find out that their personality is trash, and now you feel stuck. You're doing the same thing with your business. You're getting these cute, you're, these these cute flashes are coming before you, and you're thinking that it's God sent, and it's not. And then you find out how ugly the personality is behind it, and now you don't know what to do. But because you've been in business for umpteen years, fifty and eleven, fifty and eleven decades. You think that, oh, I can't show people that I messed this up, so let me just ride it out. But you look even crazy. You're doing it. You know, and and I'm going to, and so let me give some examples. And I can give this one because you witnessed it yourself. So when Hurricane Harvey hit, that was just a decision. My husband and I made the decision that we weren't going back to, um, we were going back to Houston. We wanted to go somewhere else. And so you knew that we left horribly. We left at like the, the middle of the morning because when we were like, oh my God, it's already starting to rain. We hit the highway and we headed to our relative's house in St. Louis. And it was like maybe three weeks or so before we could even get back into Houston before we, you know, came back in and our stuff wasn't even damaged, but the city was in shambles. And so we decided that we weren't going back to Houston, but we didn't know where we were going to go. Our relatives wanted us to stay till Christmas. We were like, we'll stay to Thanksgiving, but then we about out of there. And we decided that we were going to come down here to Atlanta. Now, mind you, with no plan, no nothing, no, we didn't look at anything. And I said, we, me and my husband feel that this is where we're supposed to go. And God knows that I've endured my time here because there were seasons when I was like, I don't understand why I'm here, but I had to even recant and stay an additional year. I'm like, let me do my time. But, but before even that, Getting down here to Atlanta, when we came, it wasn't even 72 hours before we were in our apartment. And we got a stellar deal where we got a stellar rate for an extended period of time and doors just open. Same thing when we went to Houston, when we, when we, we, you weren't there for that part, but you know, anything that I've said that God has shown me that I'm supposed to do, if I've put it out there, that's been exactly what it is. When I said we were going to get a buyer in 72 hours, because that's what God told me, it wasn't no less than 72 hours that we had a buyer. When I told people that God said that this is your husband, even though he was 21 years old, and I was like, um, I ain't even been divorced that long, you sure? But here it is, that was 2006, it's 2019, and that man is still here rocking with me. And we've been through we've been through some shit because he's never once looked at me and said, man, all that money you paid to that coach for those, you know, it, that I talked about at the beginning of this podcast, look at all that money you wasted and none of that. He's just like, hey, we got to keep going. Y'all know my horror story about the one company, the one coaching company I jumped, I invested in and we couldn't pay our rent. We both got up and we hustled and we did whatever it was we had to do in order to make it happen. So for all the naysayers, you know, it's like 13 years strong and I can I can go to my deathbed and say that I know what it's like to have a man that is committed and that is in love with me and that will ride to the ends of the earth with me. Something that many women, unfortunately, will go to their deathbed and will have never, ever experienced. So, you know, there are times when I'll be like, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. And then I'll be like, oh, shit, I spoke too fast. I ain't doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then I pull the brakes and I come back. But if I ever say that it's on my heart or my conscience to do something or the divine and the divine told me to do, it gets uncomfortable at times, but I still push through. There isn't anything that we're going to do that's uncomfortable. So let me also just go on the record and say this, you know, it wasn't like some, oh, but you guys know that I started a social networking group and we're about five days before I open it up for other people to join. But I did a podcast episode probably three months ago before anybody even knew that this was in the making. And it was one of those podcasts. It was like, but what if they come? You know, what if what you're doing by setting up this site is so much bigger than what you think? And it's not about having millions and billions of people. Maybe there'll be a solid 3000 women that are there. But I said that I did it because that's what I felt the divine led me to do. And every single step of the way, y'all just don't know. I have wanted to quit. I have gotten frustrated looking at all of this stuff, all of this coding, all of these plugins. But I also know, and it was not about being cheap. It was about understanding everything that goes on into making a site of this caliber work. But I'm putting it out there, even though I don't fully understand it, that I did it because the divine told me to. So when the divine tells me to do something, I stick to it. 
And, you know, and I've had dark, like go with my husband. I've had dark moments with my husband. And then when I feel like I want to quit, then I go back to that memory. But who put this thing together? And so that that's my thing. You know, a lot of you all, you don't want to work through the thick of it. You act like that because the divine told you to do something that is supposed to be peachy keen, that it's supposed to be easy. Oh, if he led this to me, like, for instance, in a coaching situation, oh, the divine led me to August and I just know that I'm supposed to work with her. Are you sure? Are you, I mean, are you really, really sure? Because August is the kind of person that's going to get on your nerves because you keep saying that you're trying to do something. You don't try to put your shoes on. So don't tell me you're trying to build your business. August is the one that's going to be like, you've been in business for how long? Wait a minute, you've been in business for 10 years, boo-boo, and you still got a problem asking for your money? No, we finna dig into this money mindset and why you don't feel that you're worthy. I do know that I'm worthy. Evidently, you don't because you, can, cause you can't take that price tag. August is going to look at you and say, are you not doing this? So you deal with fear. I'm not afraid. I'm a very confident woman. You're going to come right back around and you're going to say, damn, I thought that I was confident. But after working with her, I realized that I was holding back. So, I mean, if that's really, really what you want, you can don't be, don't be saying that. If, if you want somebody to be a cheerleader, then you go get your ass a cheerleader. But if you want somebody that's going to go through the thick of it with you, don't lie and say, God sent you this way because he didn't send you this way for once it gets uncomfortable for you to run away. And I'm going to tell you something. I've said it before. Women with degrees, women with degrees and people in the healing modalities. Am I, am I bad? And third, and those that are highly spiritual in the Christianity, y'all be so up in the earth with y'all thinking, I'm going to need y'all to come down to planet earth and get you some practical things going on inside of your brain. You know, I had a conversation recently uh, with an individual because we had a clash. We had a clash in the relationship and she reached out to, you know, she wanted to help me with something. And I just told her straight out. I was like, well, you know, some of your business practices, I'm not comfortable being uncomfortable with you. I was like, you know, you want to basically speak into my life, you know, and I said, honestly, I believe in receiving revelation first. And then everything someone else says to me is a confirmation. I don't like just opening myself up to anything spiritual and then letting people speak into my life. I said, literally, give me three to seven days to process some stuff. And then I get back with you. This individual came back and me. Well, you know, I just don't want to do anything personal with you anymore. I just want to keep things professional. We can only talk about business. Blah, blah. I'm like, damn. But this is the same person that when they feel in some kind of way, they disappear from social media. They go get their, you know, Reiki sessions or whatever the hell it is that they do. And they distance themselves until they, quote unquote, get their peace or get their calm. But you can't respect it in somebody else. And when I said these exact same words to them, I'm not going to defend myself. Damn. So having a regular conversation with a woman about, you know, you me telling you that all I wanted you to do was respect my space. That to you feels like somebody is attacking you. Oh, my God. That's that spiritual shit. Oh, my God. Love and light. You know, oh, my God. This is darkness. This is evil. You're attacking me. No, motherfucker. We having a real conversation and you don't want to address the fact that when it comes to dealing with shit, you don't want to have the crucial conversations. You don't want to have the hard conversations. And so here this person was one minute. You talk about, oh, my God, you're my friend. No, we were friends on Facebook. It is, friends on Facebook is a very superficial, superficial, mediocre ass term. Now that we've gotten intimate and we've gotten to bed with each other and I know some shit about you and I know some shit about your business and you know shit about me because that's just the way that I fucking coach. Now it's gotten uncomfortable because in order to really help this individual do what they need to do, the gloves got to come all the way off. We got to go to war with this piece of shit that you didn't build with this, with this foundation that's full of gaping assholes. You wanted to come and just be like, oh, I'm the shit and looking at the universe and look at what it's speaking to me and look at the doors that are opening. Okay, coach, now what do I do in order to make this deal happen? Well, she, you do a piss poor job making deals happen right now. Honey, baby child, you need more work than what you are willing to admit. And so... You guys, just stop it. Stop saying you spiritually aligned. Stop saying God led you down a path. Stop saying that the divine told you to do something when you don't really want to do the work that is required to do that shit, especially when you are, you guys, you are business owners. And unless you are operating a business where you sitting in some kind of damn cubicle or some shit by yourself, guess what? You're going to have to interact with people. And that means that it's not always going to be pretty. I literally had a client tell me she wanted to punch me in my throat because I told her you inauthentic. No, she didn't like it, but it was the truth. 
and she all up in front of her audience and yeah they telling her oh my god you know you're just you're the shit you're the epitome of authenticity but that's and you know and when she told them you know well my coach said that i'm not being authentic they were like you are authentic and i could feel the hissing i could feel the hissing like how dare your coach say that but see but what they don't know is i heard the intimate conversations about the shit that she did want i got the intimate conversations about the things she was feeling that she wanted to say that she wouldn't say and i knew what she was teaching her clients was the shit that she wasn't applying for herself and that is the epitome of inauthenticity and so if that's not what you want then you can't be you can't be around me you know, I had a I had a client ask me a, 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 a crucial ass question because I've been cutting up in my group because of the shit that I keep seeing with some of the ladies that's in there. And so I had a newer lady that was in the group and she said, well, you know, I thought you only work with badass women. These people, these women seem like they getting on your nerves, August. So why are you working with them? And I did come back and tell her, see, and this this is the thing. This is what fucks a lot of y'all up because you think that the people that you need, you think that wisdom and sound advice got to come from us. It has to come from a specific place. But I told her, I said, you know what? That was a good ass question. I had to chew on this shit. I said, and you know what? I may realize that I need to make even you. We were always evolving. I've got to make some 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 switches with the kind of woman that even I'm soliciting, who I'm speaking to, because I'm not designed and I don't have the patience to deal with that shit anymore. Because I'm needing people that's gonna meet me here. You know, my thing is, is when you come to me as a as a client. You speak to me about your vision. You see something and I see something and I just want you to meet me there. I want you to meet me to your next level of greatness. I want you to meet me beyond all of those fears and all of those pressures. And, uh, and, and, and quit. And, and so if you're willing to do that, then come holler at your girl. But if you're not, then don't don't play around. And so I got one, I, look, every, almost every woman has told me that God has shown her that I'm the one that she's supposed to work with. But I can honestly tell you that 50% of them fall off real easy. 50% of them fall off real easy. So I don't know if you have anything else that you want to put on this. There's been a few people that's been popping on and off watching, but nobody's typed in any comments. But if you want to give you know, some last words, uh, Camille, I would love for you to come back in and, you know, put your two cents in before I get ready to close it out. Listen, ladies, I'm, and I'm just going to talk directly to folks just from my own personal experience. I ain't going to share you my whole story. That's not what these last thoughts are for. But I think it's really important that we have honest conversations with ourselves. You don't have to do it in front of your coach. You don't have to do it in front of your girlfriends or your mama or your daddy unless you want to. But you have to have real honest conversations with yourself when it comes to what exactly it is that you're doing. How often do you sit back and say, hey, this thing, I felt led to do this thing. Am I really moving and operating in a way that is reflective of that? And give yourself a real answer. If the answer is no, because I didn't do this, then that's what the answer is. Can I be mad at myself because, can I be mad at the world because one of my products didn't sell? No, I got to sit back and say, did I do everything I was supposed to do? Spirit told me to put this product out here. Did I do everything that I had to do in order to make sure that people saw the product? Yes or no? That's a real simple response. Hmm. And if the answer is no, then that means that you got some work to do. The answer is not no because spirit aligned and they, these distractions and the devil and negative energies and negative forces were upon me. No, baby, it was you. And you got to be able to sit there and say, no, nah, this is on me. My bad. I'm taking that L. Let me move forward differently now because of it. And we've got to be able to sit down and have that conversation. Stop throwing spirit in the middle of it. Spirit didn't ask you to, didn't ask to be put there. You did that in order to give yourself a crutch, to give yourself a cushion, to give yourself a bump, so that when something goes wrong, you don't have to put the blame back on yourself. Mm. Can't do that in business. You got to be able to sit down with yourself, look at yourself, raw, nerdy, dirty, naked, how, whatever term, whatever adjective you want to use. You got to be able to do that, and the business is included. You say you love yourself fully and completely, but you allowing other things to be able to show you to show you only your pretty parts we don't all have only pretty parts we might be beautiful women but not everything about us is beautiful 
And are we willing to do the things necessary, the work necessary to allow spirit to transform that into beauty by sitting with that ugly for a minute? Are we willing to do that? And I think that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Mm. That's it. I'm done. I'm just done. Let me get back. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, no, I mean, that that, that was on point, though. No, thank you. Thank you, because everything that you said was on point. And I'm going to go back to that last part. I have to, because you said, hey, Spirit told me to launch this program or put this course out there. And I watch women do it all the time. You know, you put the course out there, you launch the program. And then after that, you never post again. You never say anything again. You don't reach out to people in the background. And then it's kind of like, well, he told me to launch it. But, you know, I don't know why nobody didn't sign up. You know, if you're going to be a business owner, you have to have CEO mentality. You have to take ownership for everything that is going on with your business and getting into the woo-woo space of it's always the divine of what God did or did not do. There, there has never been a time when God has said, this is the call that's on your life and I'm just going to make it happen. I don't care what, t- what, no matter what you read, no matter what you do, whether you talking about Gandhi or Jesus, no matter how spiritually profound they were, there was work and they took the, they took that thing at the, they were at the helm and they, they girded themselves with the truth and they rolled out whatever that mission or their calling was. And so a lot of you, you know, at the end of the day, you misguided and you misdirected and you saying that the divine told you to do X, Y, and Z, but you know what? You're not actually getting the direction and seeking the knowledge to make sure that you're actually able to do what needs to be done. You know, it's like I had, I had a, I had a client that launched a group so that she could be able to write a book. She got almost three decades in doing what it is that she's been doing. What the hell you got to launch a book for, or launch a group for in order to be able to write a book? Uh, you, can, you can sit on the toilet, you can shit a book. You get off the toilet and the tissue, bam, there's a book. You know, so what that says is there, there there's an identity crisis there. There's, just, there's so much shit that, that, that's just right there. You know, so at the end of the day, uh-oh, I think I got a comment that's coming in. Let me see what this is. Uh, God takes care when you make the efforts of the gardener. Yeah. You, okay. Hey, Langford, you look, you're catching me closer to the end, you know, and, and yeah, and you know what, let me, you know what you, your comment made me think about something with a twist. So when I had a house, when I was in St. Louis, I wanted a garden so bad. And there were two different places in my yard where I could have put the garden, but I had a preference of where I wanted the garden. And in the in a winter time, because of where the sun was rising, it looked like the great per- perfect place to build it. Well, needless to say, that I built it in an area that was grossly shaded. So I did have some stuff on the other side, like my cherry tomatoes and stuff like that that grew just fine. But my garden didn't blossom as well where the bulk of it was on the other side of the house. And so that goes back to my thing. God put it on my heart all the way back then to invent, to create, to do my own garden because he wanted me to eat cleaner, to eat healthier. But he didn't make a mistake telling me to start the garden. Unfortunately, I made this mistake of the placement of the garden. And so no matter how much hard work I did, while I did receive a minimal recoup from my labor, I would never receive the full fullness of my labor because I didn't do it accurately. I didn't do it appropriately. And with all of the research that I did, so that meant I had to go back and go do some things over. And so, and that still goes back case in point to this entire situation is that just because God told you to do something, that things are not going the way that you want them to. It doesn't mean that he erred. The divine never errs, but we as people do. So please be careful before you put your mouth on it and you say that's what he told you to do, but then you're going to run like a little bitch when it gets thick up in here. That's what it really all boils down to. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You know, I'm wishing you all, you know, the best and love. If you want to do the work, if you need to do the work and you're ready to keep going no matter what, then you know how to reach me. You know what social media platforms I'm on. You know, you can go to augustcrenshaw.com. You the fix my business is still rolling. There's now a DIY segment and there is a um, 
in a coaching led by me segment, but you can't, but you got to pay to play. Minimum uh, startup is $5.97 to get the coaching that you need. Come holler at your girl. Let's get your businesses right. But do not come to me if you're not ready to do the work. Camille, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Langford, you got in a little late. Thank you for coming and joining us live and whoever else was on. I seen some numbers, but you were quiet. Nevertheless, real women don't bitch. We get shit done. I love you and I'll talk to you all later. Deuces. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to cultivate a mindset that is biased towards taking action. No bitching, whining, or complaining. Here our mantra is, real women don't bitch, we get shit done. See you next week as I continue to bring you what you need to keep your head in the game and beast your business. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Would you like a specific topic covered? Have a question you would like answered live? Then head on over to realwomendon'tbitchpodcast.com. Subscribe to my email list. Hit me up and I got you. Interested in being a guest speaker? You walk the walk? Then you can sign up on the website too. This is your number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs, Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless. Signing out. Deuces. Inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher. Unlock the fire in you.